MBSR is based on a form of meditation originally out of the Buddhist tradition having to do with uh, this capacity to pay attention and to actually refine our capacity to pay attention. Mindfulness is like a deeply embodied experience of wakefulness and we call that in common parlance awareness. And it, we only are alive in one moment and that's this one, now. Using this capacity that we believe, I believe, everyone has for being mindful, being attentive in the present moment in this way, to base a training program for people who are suffering on that capacity to be mindful. I think that's what MBSR is. It's a deep engagement with uh, the vitality of the moment and the appreciation of life. And all of this is done both alone and as a group so that it has the sense of the community learning to it. In the MBSR classes, you know, we get a whole bunch of people together and people begin to talk about like what's really going on. And there's a great relief because like people realize like I'm not alone with my anxiety or my depression or feeling overwhelmed or, or, or you know the whole plethora of, of our human condition and so I think there's a breath of fresh air of people really, like really wanting to have like a, like a, a meaningful encounter with another human being and I think there's a hunger to, to, be, to, be, to, be, to connect, to be real, to, to be loved, to be seen, to be understood, to be respected for where you are, to honor, to be honored. It's also utilizing the latest in neuroscience discoveries about something called neuroplasticity. Uh, and neuroplasticity is essentially this idea that the brain can be shaped by our experience. So MBSR is also because it's repetitive, because people practice when they're in class. They practice the meditation methods when they're at home. They practice them in their everyday lives. Is that there's a kind of uh, mental muscle being built, if you will, that has real life implications in terms of you might actually handle situations in your life differently. The things that used to stress you out might not stress you in the same way. Uh, stress is the word that John used in 79 when he was coming up with the course. It was his word for the Buddhist term dukkha, which means suffering, but it means that quality of things just not being right. And it's a, it's a great word to use for what we're doing. We're reducing the effects that stress might have on the body but really what we're reducing is the um, the way that people get lost in their pain and suffering and forget that there is this inherent capacity to come back to balance and ease in our lives and the program actually accompanies people on a journey through discovering that so to me that's what the MBSR program is, the Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Program, Mindfulness-Based Suffering Reduction Program. Uh, I started talking to physicians at UMass, asking them questions like, well, of all your patients, uh, what percentage of them would you say you help? And again, remember, this is now 1979. And they, I was uh, completely astonished by their responses. They said, well, maybe 20%, 15%. And I said, well, what happens to the others? And they said, well, some get better on their own. And the rest, but what if you sent your patients to a place where, like, we could take that time and help them to tap into deep inner resources that they have simply by virtue of being human. So I wrote out uh, a four or five page proposal and I directed it to the ambulatory care department in the hospital. And I said, I'll do this two days a week for virtually no money. I mean, you know, just like, uh, pittance, uh, and they said yes to it. We'll try it. And of course, we had to decide, well, what would we call this? Well, in 1979, you weren't going to call it the mind-body clinic. You, you weren't going to call it alternative medicine. Why don't we just call it stress reduction? Anybody can relate to that. Everybody can relate to that. Let's make the mouth of the funnel as big as possible and bring people into the system. Because most of the people who will be referred to the stress reduction clinic, they are falling through the cracks of the healthcare system. 
I came as uh, uh, an intern. I was the first intern in the stress reduction clinic in 1981. I started in 1984 when there was just John and Saki. It was very informal. Um, John used to test the air quality in the hospital just to see if you could breathe because we were in the basement over the animal lab. The first uh, 10 or 12 years, we were a pretty well-kept secret. We had no windows. I'd come in in the morning and I wouldn't know if it was sunny out or snowing out. The uh, rooms were small, dark. We were in the faculty conference room. We'd go through the library. We had to look very professional because no one knew who we were. And it was wonderful. I'm lying on the floor of the faculty conference room in like the first cycle, I think, or the second cycle. And I'm halfway through the body scan. And then the door opens, and there are 30 people on the floor. And uh, this troop of people in white coats walk in. And uh, the guy in front, he comes up to me, and, and he looks down at me, and, he's, and he looks around, and he says, what's going on here? You know? This is 1980. And I say, well, this is the first, uh, this is a, the, the new stress reduction program in the hospital. He sees this guy barefoot and karate gi and all these people like lying on these colorful mats and, and he's got a retinue of people and he said, well, we have this room reserved for this time. <laughs> and I said, uh, that's funny. I thought, I was, I made sure that we had a reason. I double checked, I triple checked, you know, and so he looks around and he says to me, are these our patients? And I said, yes, they are. And he said, then we will find another place to hold our meeting. <laughs>